If you've been searching for a way to make your DaVinci Resolve motion graphics stand out and look a little bit more modern, well, in this video I have a solution for you. It's called the translucent effect, and it's really easy to do. But let's get started with this effect. So first up, inside DaVinci Resolve, we're going to want to go up to the effects library, and then we're going to grab a fusion composition. So if I just drag this down, I can add it onto my timeline. Now, depending on what kind of effect you want to do with this, you might also want to use an adjustment clip. And using an adjustment clip, you can do an effect like this on the screen as you can see, you know, like with a video behind it. But anyways, fusion clip or adjustment clip, you want to head over into the fusion page. Inside of the fusion page, I'm going to create my background and I'm going to do this with the fusion shape nodes. What I'll do is I'll just move over here, I'll do shift space and add in an S ellipse node. And after that, I'll add in an S render node. And if I view the S render node off to the side, I can come into the S ellipse and grab the rectangle or the outline and I can adjust the size. Looks like they still haven't fixed the bug where you can't adjust the height or the diagonal uh, size of the ellipse in the viewer, only the width. Anyways, how you can fix that is you can right click on the height and do expression. Now you can link the expression to the width and now they will both adjust at the same rate. So it'll create a perfect circle no matter what. All right, I'll just make that about that size and move it down to about right there. Now I'm going to add in an S rectangle node and then I can use an S merge node to connect those up. Okay, now that I've added in my shapes, I just used a S rectangle and an S engon as well to create that triangle. I'm going to add in a background. So I'll just drag down a background node and I will connect that up into the render node. Now, if we look at this merge node, you can see that the S uh, render is coming in in the yellow input and the yellow input is the background input. So in order to flip that, we'll do control T in our keyboard and that'll switch the inputs. So now inside this background node, I will come and I'll set the color to be white. Now to make the shapes pop just a little bit more, I'm gonna add in a shadow node by doing shift space and I can just grab this point, move it off to the side here a little bit. There we go. Um, I'll add some softness and then bring the alpha down. Now it's time to create the really cool translucent effect. So first we need to make the area that we are going to be defining as the place that has the translucent effect. So let's add in an S rectangle node as well as another S render node. I'm just gonna select all this and move it over. It will merge this S render node up with the output of the merge one. And now if I view that off to the side, we have a white rectangle being merged over all the other shapes. I'm gonna adjust the width, make it a little bit longer and then add some corner radius to it. I don't want to do too much. Um, and I can view this off to the side so I can see it on a transparent background. So let's say right around there. And now in the second merge node, we want to bring the blend down to about 0.5. So now we can see through our shape to the shapes behind, but it still overlays the color just a little bit. And then after the first merge node, let's add in a blur. And then we can take the S render 2 and put that as a mask into the blur node. And now, as you can see, we're getting a diffused look and kind of like a frosty glass texture. I'm going to put the blur size up to somewhere around, uh, let's say 40. And now after that, something I like to add is a soft glow node. And again, make sure you put the mask in or from the uh, render node. And you can get a kind of cool uh, result. Just bring the glow size up a bunch and then the glow amount as well. And if you want to see what that did, you can toggle it on and off in the inspector. Okay, so now we want to make this rectangle up here stand out a little bit more so it doesn't blend in with the background quite as much. So how we're going to do that is adding in an S outline node. And now if we take the output of the, re uh, the S rectangle and put this into the S outline, you can view it off to the side and nothing happens. The reason is because we don't have an S render node. So let's do shift space and add in the S render node. And now if we view it, we can see we have a nice outline. Let's come into the outline and bring the thickness all the way down. Uh, we really don't want this to be that thick here. This is more of a just subtle with that effect that we're going to add. Now let's add in a background node. And the reason we're going to do this is because we want to change the color of this outline. But the only way we can do that right now is by changing the actual color of the rectangle, which we don't want to do. So I'll take the output of this S render and put this into the input or the mask input of the background. Now if I merge this up, we can view it off to the side and we have a black outline. And the color is defined by the color of this background node, so I can change that to whatever I want. I'll set this to a black, and then I will bring the alpha all the way down, just so it's a really slight um, little outline around the edge of our shape. So yeah, 0.064 is what I set it to. Very, very small. All right, and then we want to add in a shadow node. So to shift space, add in shadow. And you want to drop this in between the S render and the merge 2. You don't want to put it... Um, in between the S render and like the blur and soft glow and stuff. All right, so now let me just offset the shadow a little bit, very little bit, and then I'll add some softness and bring the alpha down. So the goal of the shadow is to make it look like this uh, rectangle is kind of popping out from the background. 
and adding a very soft shadow really helps out that effect. And finally, to add some nice texture to this uh, rectangle, let's add in a film grain node. And now if we zoom in, you can see it's really strong right now, and we don't want that. So let's bring the size way down, as well as the strength way down. I found putting them to about 0.3 each is going to give you a really nice effect. So if you zoom in, uh, there's just a little bit of texture uh, to it. We could bring the, the roughness or the strength up just a little bit more. Maybe the size as well. You don't want this to be over the top, but you definitely want to add some texture. And there we go, that's your translucent effect. And the cool thing about this is you made it so it is procedural. That means that you can take anything you want and put it into this blur node and it will update the entire effect. You can also take whatever you want and put it into this input. Well, I guess two inputs. But no matter where it's positioned or what you put in here, you can see that it will update the translucent effect based on whatever is going into these inputs. Now this is set up using fusion shape nodes, but you can modify this to use any bitmap uh, coming in to drive the translucent effect. Now if you want to use multiple shapes, one issue that you're going to run into, uh, let's say I add in another, like an S and node, and let's say I just add in an S merge node, you know, that's, that's what you think you'd do. Connect those up. Um, as you can see, we have this outline and it is extending into our original shape. And we really don't want that because we want to make it seem like that's just tracing around the entire uh, effect. So instead of using an S merge node, what you want to do is use an S boolean. And if you just drop that right in here and then connect the other uh, end gun up and you want to set this to be union. And now, as you can see, it will merge those two together. You can see it off to the side here with the outline. It creates a kind of cool effect. You can use this for a bunch of stuff but it'll only trace around the edges of the final effect. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite effect is. This one's pretty high up there on my list. Anyways, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.